seems to me that everyone I talk to today is overwhelmed with stress and worry about the future. Maybe it has everything to do with the pandemic and COVID-19. Maybe it has things to do with things that are happening internationally with Ukraine and Russia and NATO. Maybe it has everything to do with what's happening around food and what we see in the grocery stores. Or maybe it has everything to do with the cost of everything seeming to go up on a daily basis. Because of all of these things, because we're surrounded by all of these things, everyone seems to be overwhelmed with stress and worry about these things. To live in a place of fear and discouragement is hard to live at all. In fact, we can't flourish. We can't even maybe think through life when we're surrounded by those things. Maybe that's you today. Everyone needs hope to flourish. Hope is one of those things when you actually have hope, it will transform your whole life. Every person needs hope to be present in their life if we want to flourish, if we want to survive. This Easter, as we look at the story of Jesus and his crucifixion and resurrection, we are reminded of hope, the hope that is found in God. Let's pick up the story of Jesus in Luke 23, where we see Jesus being led away to the cross and being crucified. When Jesus was crucified, he was crucified with other people. The Roman guards crucified him, and there was this mob of people who had gathered around to watch the crucifixion. It was a Roman crucifixion. It, it wasn't a pretty sight, and it was done in public to make sure that the citizens of the country that the Romans were in control with were following the rules and following the law. As we read in Luke 23, verses 39 through to 43, we hear this dialogue of the criminals being crucified with Jesus and Jesus. It says, one of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This accounting of the death of Jesus shed some light into our lives on what it's actually like to live with hope. This criminal that's being crucified beside Jesus is infused with hope in this moment where he is definitely thinking about what's going to happen after he is crucified. Here's the first thing that we see, this element of hope that is present in the criminal, and that is hope is based on belief of truth. This one criminal who rebukes the other criminal who says, do you not fear God since you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we're receiving this due reward for our deed, but this man's done nothing wrong. 
as we're told in verses 40 and 41. This criminal believed that Jesus was God. He knew who Jesus was. He knew that he was king of a kingdom because he actually said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He also knew that Jesus was being crucified. He hadn't done anything wrong. He was sinless. He had this fear of God. And he also understood that he himself had done something wrong and he was receiving this just sentence. All of these things are true aspects of who Jesus was. And he believed it to be true. You see, if we're going to have hope, there must be a truth that is believed. And I'm not just not talking about some relative truth, what you think is true or what I think is true. I'm talking about concrete, absolute truth, something that is known to be true that cannot be disputed. You see, when I say I believe that re my retirement fund is good based on the truth that stocks will go up, that's not really a truth statement because stocks may not go up. We would like those stocks to go up, but they may not. You see, this kind of thinking is not really based on hope, it's wishful thinking. And hope is not wishing. You see, hope is based on belief in an absolute truth that is undeniable. Hope has with it a belief in truth. And the truth that we see here is Jesus. Jesus is the truth. And to be a person of hope, we need to be people of truth. People who believe in the truth. Now, you might be asking, well, what is truth today? What in this world of relative truth do we actually say is absolute? Well, for one, we need to look beyond ourselves. We need to look to things that have been proven true throughout time. God's word is one of those things, the Ten Commandments, which all societies are built around in our world. Things that point back to the creation of the earth, the universe. Things that we know to be true in historical fact. Not the rewriting of history, but historical fact, archaeological evidence, scientific proof that shows these things are true. And for centuries, we have lived as a society knowing and understanding absolute truth. Hope is based on a belief of an absolute truth. And in fact, if you don't have absolute truth, you can't really get a hold of hope. You see, truth is a thing that doesn't change. It remains the same. And this criminal had this truth and this understanding, this belief, this value of who Jesus was. And it was that basic ingredient of truth and belief merging together that allowed the seed of hope to take root in the criminal. But it doesn't just end there. For all of us today, what we need to transform our life is this belief in truth, this belief in absolute truth. Then on top of that, what we add is that hope is connected to a promise. You see, this criminal who is dying on a cross, very similar to the cross that Jesus is dying on, Ask Jesus to remember him. The criminal says to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He is 
hoping and asking God to do something. And Jesus responds with a promise in verse 43. And Jesus says to this criminal, as this criminal asks this question, to remember me, will you remember me? Please remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says, truly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. These words that Jesus says are telling of who Jesus is, but also him saying truly. This is him saying, what I'm about to say to you is absolutely true. He's making this commitment in his words when he says, truly, I say to you. He's emphatically saying that what I'm about to say to you is true. You see, his hope that this criminal has is based upon the belief in who Jesus is. And now Jesus makes this promise, promising today that he, the criminal, would be with Jesus in paradise. Well, what is this place, paradise? Is it heaven? Well, the Bible actually doesn't give us a lot of information about what paradise is. In the Jewish mind, as this would be uh, written and understood as first century readers, this idea of paradise is very much what we would call or describe as heaven today. The point that Jesus is really making that we can kind of miss, miss out on and just sort of center in on the paradise is that Jesus makes this promise to the criminal that the criminal would be where Jesus would be. As he says, today you'll be with me in paradise. Wherever Jesus is going to be, it's a good place. And this promise that Jesus gives to the criminal is the basis, the connecting point to hope. Hope is always connected to a promise. So let me ask you this question. What promise has God given you? If God has not given you a promise, it's actually quite difficult to live with hope. If no one has ever given you a promise, it's even more difficult to even have hope in our world. People make promises all the time, but people also don't commit and keep their promises. And it's those situations that cause us to lose hope in others. It's those situations that suffocate our hope. But God, on the other hand, who is trustworthy and can't lie, never misses a promise. Promises we believe need to be promises that come from God if we want to have real hope. You see, the absolute truth of who God is and the belief in that truth and believing what God has actually promised causes us to live with hope. To be a person of hope, we need to live in the promises of God, have faith in those promises and hold on to those promises despite what we see around us. And it's that hope that actually transforms our life from fear and discouragement to this place of hope. Once we get to this stage where we are connecting to a promise, we then realize peace. You see, hope is a dispenser of peace. What we see in this recounting of events around the crucifixion, this conversation that this criminal has with Jesus, we see peace come. This criminal who is dying is concerned about their eternity. 
They're wondering what is about to happen. It's shown in the question that the criminal asked Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. It's really not a question about eternity, but it's more of a statement of belief about eternity. You see, the criminal believed that there was something to come after his death. But he didn't know for sure whether that would be a place favorable to him. And by Jesus giving this answer that today that he would be with him in paradise filled this criminal's heart with peace. Now you may ask the question, well, how do I know? It doesn't say there that his heart was filled with peace. No, it doesn't. But the very fact that that's the end of the conversation means that that criminal had enough information not to say anything more. You see, at the response of Jesus, peace, contentment, hope, joy, flooded his heart and mind. You see, belief in Jesus, trusting his promises, immediately calms the criminal who's on the cross. The criminal has nothing more to say. His biggest concern, his biggest fear in this moment of crucifixion is now being answered. And when we live with real hope, not wishful thinking, not some kind of worldly hope, hoping in the institutions of our world, but a hope that is based on the truth of God and his promises, we are filled with peace and contentment. You see, that's how hope transforms our life, our world. This criminal who is on the cross and being overwhelmed with the stress of crucifixion and what is about to happen to me after I die is filled with peace. When he sees and he believes the truth of God and the promises of God and the hope of being with God in this place of paradise. You see, if there's anything that we need today in the midst of our situation is hope in Jesus. Believing the truth about Jesus, believing the promises of Jesus, the promises of eternal life, the promises of him never leaving us nor forsaking us, the promises that God will provide for his people in the midst of their needs. All of those things bring peace into our lives as we live with hope in Jesus. If you've never believe the truth about Jesus, then today I would challenge you to find that truth, to dig into that truth and believe it because yes, it is true. Jesus did come. God did come to this world. He is coming back again. He has made all kinds of promises and those promises are true and real and tangible. And if you've never known the peace of God in the midst of your situation, then today would be a great day to know that peace by just saying to God, I'm just like this criminal. I don't know what's going to happen to me. I don't know what my future holds. But I believe you are who you say you are. And I want to be with you in your kingdom. And if you are in that place of that criminal and you say the things that this criminal says, then you can know for sure that the same response that Jesus gives the criminal, he gives to you today.
where he says, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. You see, it's hope in Jesus that transforms our future. It's not the things of this world. It's the things that are beyond this world that hold this world together. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you already are living with this hope, I want to challenge you to go and share the hope that's transformed your life with others so they too can be with you in paradise. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for the hope that we have in you. Lord, we believe who you are. We understand who you are, Jesus. And we believe the promises that God has given us through you, Jesus, and through the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray today that you would draw us closer to you, that we would have the peace that comes from living with hope in Jesus. And Lord, that we would be dispensers of this hope and this grace to transform not only our lives, but the lives of the people around us. So Lord, we worship you, we praise you, we thank you for your goodness, and we thank you for the hope that you have given us. And we pray all of this in the name of your son, Jesus.